what's happening with the gold price and this golden pennant? Um, the reader's question is why hasn't the gold price gone through the roof over the last few years with governments buying up tons of them? There should be, they should be putting, putting pressure on demand and that should push prices up. The second half of the question is another reader's question. Given the exchange rate is half the equation for Australian investors in gold, what's your view on the Australian dollar in relation to gold? Right. Well, uh, the Australian dollar in relation to gold will correlate pretty much with the U.S. dollar. Now, what I mean by that, there's an there's a Aussie dollar, U.S. dollar exchange rate, and it fluctuates. The Australian dollar last year was uh, a little stronger than I expected, although it was volatile. It had to cut, went down a little bit, but then it came back up. So the Australian dollar has shown some strength. But just to take the first part of the question first, and then I'll come back to the, the cross exchange rate. Um, the uh, What's going on with the dollar price of gold is nothing. <laughs> it's been... It's been really flat. The, the, it, the broad range um, has been $1,700 to $1,900, $1,700 an ounce to $1,900 an ounce. A couple of exceptions, but relatively few. There were a couple spikes and a couple smashes, but in every case, it came back to the range. So in the, in the few instances where it got smashed down to 1688 it was back up to 1750 in no time. Couple of times when it spiked up to 1925, it was back down to 1875 before you know it. So leaving aside those exceptions, and and the, none of them lasted long. They were exceptions. Um, the range, the broad range, has been $1,700 on the low end, $1,900 on the high end. But the central tendency is $1,800. I looked at the ticker before I got on this interview, and uh, it was about 18 uh, one. I was literally right, right, right in the middle of of the road. So. Um, but what does that mean? Everyone's like, well, you know, the gold is up, gold is down. Uh, but when that, so what do you mean when you say that? And they're talking about the dollar price of gold. And it's like, okay, so the dollar price of gold is up or down. That's really a cross rate. That's no different than talking about the euro US dollar exchange rate or, or Australian dollar US dollar exchange rate. If you think of gold as money, and I do, then the dollar price of gold with gold measured by weight, not as another currency, uh, it is another form of money, but with gold measured by weight, it's a cross exchange rate. And so when you say gold is going up, let's say it went to $2,000 an ounce, I mean, I'm not forecasting that in the short run, uh, I am in the long run, but in the short run, no. But let's say it went to $2,000 an ounce, I would say, oh, the price of gold went up, you know, just went up uh, 10%. Um, well, did it or did the dollar go down? Uh, the way I would phrase it is, you know, it used to be $1,800 to get an ounce of gold. Now it's $2,000 to get an ounce of gold, or, you know, your dollar got you one eighteen hundredth of an ounce. Today, it only gets you one two thousandth of an ounce. Uh, in other words, gold didn't do anything. It's a metal, it's an element, atomic number 79. What happened was the, the dollar got stronger. So a stronger dollar is a lower dollar price for gold and a weaker dollar is a higher dollar price for gold. So when people talk about gold going up, what they're really talking about is the dollar going down. And so the question is, if you want to forecast the price of gold, say what's going to happen to the dollar? Um, right now, the dollar's got a lot of strength. And it's not because of, you know, I mean, there is inflation out there. The U.S. just, you know, hit the register at 30 trillion dollars of national debt we hit the it took a while it took 230 years but we got to 30 trillion dollars of debt um inflation's breaking out uh stock markets are weak there are any number of reasons why you might say well gee the dollar's got to get weaker here they you know we you need to promote exports or uh import uh um uh you basically uh, you know, create export related jobs and kind of get the economy going with a cheaper dollar. But, um, the, uh, but that's not happening. So why? Well, the answer is, and this is behind the curtain, there's huge demand for dollars all over the world, not because of the currency, but because of collateral, because of treasury bills. Banks need treasury bills to pledge as collateral for derivatives. It's the best collateral in the world. Um, and if you don't have it, you're not going to be able to leverage your balance sheet as much as you would like. You're not going to be as profitable. You're not going to be able to support lending and investing, which is what banks in theory are supposed to do. And so, <clears throat> pardon me, um, to, to support the bloated balance sheets and to support the derivatives, you need collateral. 
And the better the collateral, the more leverage you can have. The best collateral in the world is a treasury bill. And so there's a mad scramble for treasury bills, which means there's a mad scramble for dollars to buy treasury bills. And that is coming from European banks, it's coming from Chinese banks um, and banks around the world, but primarily European and Chinese. And that's not going away. So it's, it's, it's funny to hear people, or people think it's funny to hear anyone talk about a dollar collateral shortage, like, hey, haven't you flooded the world with dollars? Hasn't the Fed printed $9 trillion? And the answer is they have. But that's not the measure. It's, it's, a, it's a high multiple of that. It's the dollar value of all the collateral. Because in the repo markets, you know, I pledge the collateral to you, and then you pledge it to somebody else, one of our colleagues, and then she pledges it to somebody else, et cetera. That collateral gets pledged 50 times and supports not $1 a balance sheet, but $50 a balance sheet for a dollar of collateral. And so you restrict the collateral, you're restricting the balance sheet. So that's not getting better. And so I could give you 20 reasons why the dollar should go down, but I'll give you one big reason why it won't, which is the demand for collateral. And so that's keeping the dollar constant, which is keeping the dollar price of gold constant because gold doesn't change and the dollar's not changing. Now that'll break um, and that'll break in favor of gold, meaning the dollar will get a lot weaker. It'll have to, but it's gonna take a few months at least because the US economy has to get weaker, which it is. And then the hardest thing is for the Fed to for the Fed to get a wake up call. The Fed's always the last to know. I'm telling you right now what's going to happen. We're talking about it. The Fed will figure this out maybe by September, next, next September. Um, and uh, then they'll ease a little bit and they'll try to weaken the dollar to try to give the U.S. economy a boost. But we're not there yet. So it's going to be now that doesn't mean the price of gold is going down a lot. I'm just saying it's not going to go up a lot. It's going to chug along kind of sideways, but when it breaks, it's going to break big to the upside because the dollar is going to go to the downside, but that's probably at least um, still a few months away, maybe longer.